Receive negotiation-free, guaranteed savings. Save time, save money, and never overpay. Visit TrueCar.com today. That's TrueCar.com. News Radio 1070 WKOK presents On the Mark. It's a chance to voice your opinion on the events that affect life in the Susquehanna Valley. Call 1 800 795 9565 or email on the mark at WKOK.com. Now, here are your hosts for On the Mark Mark Lawrence and Joe McGranahan. Greetings and welcome on board the WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show. It is entitled On the Kevin. I am Mark Lawrence, host of the show. On the other side of the glass is the engineer for whom the program is named. He's officially, he has now taken over. We Why know, was he screaming and yelling? He sounded like well, a madman over there. He's in hysterics because <laughs> he's trying to run his Someone computer. moved the mouse? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to use the mouse at the same time, but he thinks this is hilarious. So he's throwing <laughs> pencils and laughing. And oh, yeah, I was, I was really happy. <laughs> well, I could hear you through the glass. I thought you were cracking up. <laughs> I know on 94KX, thousands of people are like, why do they have a studio next to a sales office or something, you know, with all the yelling in the background? <laughs> so, well, well anyway, so, so he seems to have calmed down now. Yeah, so he thought it was funny. I went over and told him some funny jokes, and so... <laughs> that did it. That, that, that always <laughs> does it. All righty. So why as a chicken cross the road, right? <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? Well, I just figured that's your style. He didn't get the punchline either. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, our webcam is up and running, and that is exclusively because of Kevin's hard work. He is the greatest engineer the planet has ever known, really, in this universe. He's also the greatest engineer in the Milky Way. So I honestly think that that is noteworthy, and we have to keep that in mind, okay? And in most places in the U.S., you can't see the Milky Way, but it is important that you keep in mind that it is... A, uh, it's a it's a real thing, okay? And it's not a candy bar. But the webcam is up and running. Super sharp image, a better angle, and super audio. If you'd like to watch it during the show, we invite you to watch the millions of people who have the opportunity to watch the show every day via the webcam live. Uh, it's a 24-hour archive right there on the website. Or just click one click away. That's all you got to do. Click on our YouTube channel, and they can go right to that. And then you got the archive of that video, all the other videos. Uh, Sarah's going to be posting some Union County Fire video before too long, and uh, we have video up uh, from the River Festival, and just there's a lot of video posted there, so check it out. It's all very compelling. It all gets many, 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 many hits on YouTube, so join the folks who are checking us out in that manner. On the Mark is brought to you by the Sunbury Motor Company, family-owned dealership since 1915, 4th Street, Sunbury, routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf. Find out more about them at sunburymotors.com. One of the things you can check out there is the kind of car that Kevin is driving, which is the Kia Soul. Cute little white car. It looks a little square and small, but I'll tell you what, mileage is high, ultra safe, super warranty, low price, and it is uh, the cat's meow when it comes to transportation for the whole family. So I did some uh, experiments on the highway mileage, and it appeared to be around 36, so it's like uh, 28 city, 36 highway. Right, but it is illegal oh, to tailgate tractor certain... trailers and draft. That's only NASCAR. Really? Okay. Yes. Because I was getting some really good mileage. I'm sure you were. <laughs> There's a certain amount of irony in the fact that Kevin is driving a square car. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing square about me. I know. <laughs> right. He's a, he's a sharp guy, so he's got all kinds of sharp corners. So, yes, yeah, so we'll talk more about that during the 9 o'clock hour, but uh, Kevin is trying to squeeze every gallon of gas out of that uh, vehicle before he gives it up. Otherwise, he has to fill it up, so he is not interested in doing that. <laughs> SunburyMotors.com. Lenape Solar is open. Boy, well, they love to help you out. Maybe you have a boiler in your home that's ultra inefficient, and maybe your air conditioners, you still have to put them in and out of the window. Uh, one call, one device from Lenape Solar uh, can help you and it is Ductus HVAC Systems and it is a very simple system small box on the outside tiny box on the walls of the inside of rooms up to four rooms can have the inside ductless uh, heat exchangers and you can add supplemental heat uh, you can heat a home or a room and uh, you can add supplemental cooling uh, of course it is a heat pump so it does it all and it's ultra efficient it's Fujitsu and it's available at Lenape Solar Lenape Solar dot com uh, one note we told you about a fire last evening in Union County, but well, there is a 
fire call right now downtown Lewisburg. So watch for congestion on Route 45 Market Street in Lewisburg. Some smoke at a building popped up, so uh, they're making sure that that turns out to be as little as possible. But uh, watch for volunteer firefighters on Route 45 Market Street in Lewisburg. Joe McGranahan, my co-host. Welcome aboard, sir. Well, thank you. It's been a while since I've talked. <laughs> I know. Was it such a burden? <laughs> it was. Usually you just interrupt me. So you Well, were... I thought I'd be polite today for a change. Ah, let's see. I got an AP bulletin. It appears as though Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt have gotten married. Well, gee, there's a piece of news I couldn't have gone through the day without. So, well, they're, it's a fun couple to watch in a way. They're very sort of non Hollywoody in that they are very, uh, I mean, they adopt good kids and they are, I, I just think they're kind of interesting to keep an eye on. When you so. talked about kids, that's something I wanted to bring up this morning about kids. But am I supposed to stop talking now? No, you can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Stop, you, time's up. All right. You saw the story about, and, and I I'm, have some mixed feelings about this. But the nine-year-old girl, you who was up? parents, yes, who whose parents were teaching her, or took her to a shooting range to have her learn how to shoot an Uzi submachine gun. The firing instructor tells her, "All right, full auto." The girl pulls the trigger, supposedly aiming at a target, black target, some distance away. The recoil of the gun, when she pulls the trigger, pulls it up. She shoots the instructor in the head and kills him. All this while her parents are videotaping it. Now, I understand you want to teach a child gun safety, and it certainly is a responsible thing to do, I suppose, to take a child, if you wanted to learn something about guns, to a professional instructor. But can you think of any valid reason why a nine-year-old would need to learn how nine-year-old girl would need to learn how to shoot an Uzi? Well, I don't think there is a reason. I, I just think they, you know, it's portrayed as something that you can do that is fun, and it, of course, is a dead serious topic. But I think you go to these places and they give you a clip full of automatic weapons. I've been to places where you could shoot a 50 caliber machine gun, and which is much, much bigger than the Uzi. So there's a, uh, there's a recreational aspect to shooting automatic weapons that most of us don't get to enjoy. I never have. So um, I think that's what that's all about. But obviously, uh, is that nine-year-old too young? Guess what? The answer is yes. That's in, what in I that think. Case, so. I, I think you have to make the judgment per child. You can't just make it across the board because I know some 15-year-olds that uh, are not uh, able to handle a weapon. So, I, I mean, is nine too young? I don't know because I think you have well, to judge that purpose, on an individual basis. What would be the purpose of teaching a nine-year-old to fire a U Uzi? Fun. It's fun. Yeah, shooting is fun. Well, it wasn't for the instructor <laughs> well, or his family. Well, or I think any time driving is fun unless you have an accident, and then it's well, not fun. Well, that's true. I can't argue that so, point with you. I, you know, accidents happen. But I can see a need. I mean, you could possibly go through your entire life without ever having the need to fire an Uzi. Would you agree with that? Would, Would you, you agree with that? Have you gone through your entire life without ever firing a gun? No, I fired a gun. Okay. Um, yeah, I used to go to the outdoor show in Harrisburg when I was a kid growing up, and they had a place there where you could shoot. Mm -hmm. And most of us like shooting games or things like that, whether it's a gun or not. You know, you like to see if you can match your skill and hit a target. But there's a, uh, you know, to me, there's a reasonable way to do that and, un and an unreasonable way to do it. And an unreasonable way to do it is to take a nine-year-old girl who had conceivably no use for an Uzi, might need to learn how to shoot a handgun or a rifle. Certainly, I would have no objection if she did that. And if an accident happened there, it would be just as tragic. But it would be more understandable to me than a nine-year-old shooting an Uzi. Or any weapon where the recoil or the, uh, what I guess it's the recoil you call it, when you pull the trigger, is so great that they might not be able to physically control the, the weapon. And that's apparently what happened in this case. Well, in, in this case, the supervisor or the trainer or the, the person in charge should have supervised, trained, and been in charge. Obviously, he was not. I mean, really, I, 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 should a kid have an opportunity to shoot an uh, automatic weapon or not? I think, why not? It's kind of fun. It, there, there, it certainly is safe under the correct circumstances. It, it isn't going to be a life-changing experience for most kids, although it is for this nine-year-old, but it is an opportunity to have recreation in a way that most families don't get a chance to do so I think with proper supervision uh, I don't really see anything wrong with it it isn't the kind of thing that I would want to do but in families where guns are more prevalent or more important I think that's okay but the issue is supervision that's what was lacking obviously well, no, he was supervising the guy was a no. trained instructor yeah but, but how long you're gonna blame him huh? how long was he instructing is this a veteran instructor is this an instructor his, he was 30, his name was Charles Vaca he's 39 years old he was standing next to the girl at the last stop outdoor shooting range in White Hills, Arizona. Um, let's see, I'm looking to see here. 
what it says about it. He told her that parents were videotaping this. Uh, and it isn't the first, by the way, accidental shooting by a child using a Newsy. An eight-year-old boy died after shooting himself in the head at a gun expo near Springfield, Massachusetts in 2008. Christopher Beasy was firing at pumpkins when the Uzi kicked back. So, I mean, there you have a pretty good example of what can happen when a kid gets a hold of a, a high-powered weapon that has a fairly strong recoil. Well, you need adults to supervise this. That's it. You can't just sit there, okay, here it is. Okay, go ahead. It's your opportunity. You got your headphone or your earphones on? Yes. Go. I mean, you have to stand there. The guns kick back. That's what automatic weapons do. If you ever see somebody actually firing one, you know mm -hmm. they struggle to keep it under control. Well, he may have made a mistake because Ronald Scott, a Phoenix-based firearms safety expert, uh, said most shooting ranges have an age limit and strict safety rules when teaching children to shoot. He said instructors usually have their hands on guns when children are firing high-powered weapons. Correct. So apparently he didn't do that in this case. Right, you would keep your hands above the gun so when it starts to come up, you, you catch it and start to be the holder of the gun. Well, I'd love to get people's view on this. Let's ask uh, folks, 1-800-795-9565 is our telephone number. Is 9 too young? Is 39 young enough for old enough for a supervisor? Or should it have been a literal hands-on thing where both the youngster and the adult were holding the gun at the same time? Is there any circumstance where an Uzi should be in the hands of a minor. Um, I, I'd just like to hear people's reaction to this. Such a tragedy. It's a shame that you know we have to that there is a victim in this case li like this. But uh, that's what thrust it into the news. So well, here's here we another go. piece of information. Well, let's get the break and then we'll do, well. Well, go let ahead. me just throw this in quick. A lot of people think about it during the break. The gun range operator said he doesn't know what went wrong to cause the shooting, pointing out that Vaca was an Army veteran who had experience in both Iraq and Afghanistan. So he wasn't an amateur. Right. 1-800-795-9565. What do you think about this, folks? Call us now. We're not going to stay on this topic too long. Well, I would just love this, guy, this, uh, this uh, discussion. You know, we live in a gun society uh, where weapons are very common and uh, responsibly used are a big part of our lives. 1-800-795-9565, our toll-free line. Email us at onthemarket.wkok.com. Those messages plop into the Lenape Solar email in basket and make a sort of a watery plopping sound. And uh, then our main sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company. You've patiently waited all summer to buy that new car or truck. Well, this is it. It's the giant Labor Day liquidation at Sunbury Motors. 2015s are arriving and SMC has to make room by blowing out 2014 models. The end of summer means the best savings of the year. Just listen. 2014 Ford Focuses start at 14915 Save up to seven grand on 2014 Ford F-150s. And Sunbury Motors has over 75 to choose from. Four-wheel drive super cabs are as low as 30924 Hyundai Sonatas are discounted $4,000. 2014 Hyundai Elantras start at sixteen seven, And every new Hyundai comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. End the summer with a new car or truck during the Labor Day liquidation. Going on now through Saturday at Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza Sunbury and at sunburymotors.com. SMC, a tradition of trust since 1915. Come on home to convenience. Come on over with style. Come on home to Kohl's Hardware for everything you need to start canning your homemade jams, jellies, salsas, pickles, and more. Kohl's stocks a complete line of made-in-the-USA ball canning jars, food saver vacuum sealers, and bags, canners, pressure cookers, food strainers, and Mrs. Wages pickles and tomato mixes. If you want to make sure all of your hard work in the garden provides healthier food that's better for your family, tastes better than your mother-in-law's, and gives you a taste of the summer season this winter, it's easier than you think. Whether you're new to canning or a seasoned pro, let the knowledgeable professionals at Kohl's Hardware help you every step of the way. Check out the sale prices in our new circular at Kohl'sHardware.com and sign up for exclusive online offers year-round. Come on home to Kohl's. We're right around the corner, right here in your hometown. Come on home to Kohl's for all your canning needs. Come on home to Kohl's. Kohl's Hardware. Come on home to Kohl's. Kohl's Hardware. Come on home to Kohl's. 
This is John. And John from, from Biders Home, Home Center. Center. I need your help. With what? My wife found out Biders will be closed on Labor Day. So? She has a honeydew list for me as long as my arm. I don't want to labor on my day off. Just tell her with Biders huge Labor Day sale with 0% interest financing for one year now through 5 p.m. Sunday, you'll need the day off to recover when it's over. Ooh, that's good. And believe me, with all the price slashing and great deals to offer, you'll be plenty tired. You're not kidding. We have a 19-inch LED TV for only $107. A Power Chase recliner is just $267. And a transitional microfiber sofa is a low, low $297, now at all biters. Plus, we have a 14.8 cubic foot refrigerator for $397. And a complete six-piece master bedroom with a headboard, footboard, dresser, mirror, chest, and nightstand is an unheard of $699. So for these savings and more throughout the store, head to one of Biter's five convenient locations for our huge Labor Day sale and zero percent interest for one year, now through 5 p.m. Sunday. This is John and John saying hurry to Biter's Biter's Home Center Center today. today. See store for complete financing details. Today is the day you switch to Rite Aid for one simple reason, Wellness Plus, the card that gives you credits you can use like cash, plus discounts that only members get, plus 20% off almost the entire store, plus that's for a whole year, plus rewards that start today and pile on every time you shop. So if you're tired of missing out on all the pluses only Rite Aid delivers, visit RiteAidWellness.com to sign up and learn more today about Wellness Plus. Rite Aid, with us, it's personal. Hi, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green, the iconic cleaning formula known around the globe. Since being introduced to households and businesses over 35 years ago, the family of Simple Green products has grown. But one thing all of them share is my full commitment to their excellence. Simple Green. Try a Simple Green product today, and if you're not 100% satisfied, I'll refund your money. Visit us at simplegreen.com. Simple Green. Well, the Nittany Lions open the football season Saturday, so why not have the head football coach on the show? James Franklin, one-on-one with us today, 3 to 5, News Radio 1070, WKOK. One-on-one with James Franklin on the Steve Jones Show this afternoon. A fantastic opportunity. What do you know, Kevin? And, and, and also the uh, some of the uh, position coaches as well. So it's going to be an all-coaches show today on the Steve Jones Show. All right, fantastic. Sounds great, Steve Jones Show. Getting popular and popular as time goes on. So we hope, folks, are we boring you? Is well, I'm waiting for our Stan, our phone caller. We usually rush right into that. Stan, go ahead. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, good morning. <laughs> Uh, as far as the guys, the guy getting shot, yeah, they both screwed up. The parents screwed up, and the instructor screwed up. Now, you got a full auto weapon. I don't know how many rounds was in the magazine. Does anybody know how no, many was in that one? We have a I thousand mean, unanswered questions. Round. But all they had to do was limit the rounds in the magazine. She had three, four rounds in it, and it wouldn't have got away from her. You mean the more bullets in it, the more it recoils? Well, the more no, it goes but off. there's more, let's see, after four rounds, it's going to stop. Right, but if the second so, or third round killed the guy, it's still too late. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what that was. So, yeah, you're right. If it, got a, if it got away from her on the first or second round, yeah, then it doesn't matter. But usually a 9 millimeter doesn't have a lot of recoil. Now, I don't know how big this girl was. She may have not, they should have maybe used a 9 millimeter handgun to see how she reacted to 9 millimeter. But I do know on a full auto weapon like that, a small Uzi, once it starts running full auto, if you don't have the strength to hold it down, you can't get your finger off the trigger. And if you can't get the trigger finger off the trigger, it's not stopping. Right. Well, that, that's why I think you, that's why I think you have to keep in mind each child individually. I, I don't think you can make a broad a bro, across uh, the board decision Absolutely. that this age or that age is acceptable. All right. Right. I I know some kids. You know, at nine years old, they're pretty big and. They could probably handle that without any problem, but still, until you know how well they can handle it, you limit the rounds in the magazine. Well, what would your opinion be, uh, Stan, of why a parent would want a nine-year-old girl to learn how to fire an Uzi? I mean, there are other guns well, that would be more appropriate. <laughs> that, uh, that's a good question. I mean, yeah, they're fun to shoot. I've shot them. Never an Uzi. Um, I was in the military, shot full auto stuff, and it's fun to shoot. It just, it just is. All right, Stan, but let me... But a let nine-year-old... Me... Probably a little young for it yet, you know. Especially if she's never shot anything, you know. Even just a regular nine millimeter handgun with one, you know, even a semi-auto where one pull the trigger, put one shot out, and it stops. 
And if she can't handle that, then there's obviously no reason she should be using it. All right, Stan, let me read this. Weapon. Let me read this to you, Stan. It says uh, this was sent to us by Drew, who is a g- good source of accurate information. And Sunbury says this was written by my good friend, who's an NRA instructor and safety officer, and he has many years experience with full automatic arms. And he had a, this uh, individual had a chance to see the full video before whatever was uh, curtailed on online was uh, taken off. It says his position relative to meaning the instructors. The instructor's position relative to the girl was entirely wrong, as was the stance he instructed her to use. You stand square to the line with a submachine gun and lean into it, not quartered and straight up. And he should uh, have been, okay. he should have been behind her and slightly to the right, left hand on her shoulder and right hand either at the ready or supporting the forward end of the gun if she required assistance. I didn't notice it the first time I watched, but she placed his left hand under the magazine because they supposed she was having issues holding the gun up. The Uzi's pretty heavy for its size, which right. actually yeah. provided the fulcrum point around which the accident took place. Really bad idea and something I've never seen anyone do before. The big issue for me is that the full-auto Uzi is generally terrible firearm to teach a kid that small to shoot. The That's grips, a good point. The grip Absolutely. is way too big for yeah. small kids. I mean, take, hold on, let me finish. Where you start them. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, Stan. It says uh, the grip is way too big for small kids and takes a lot of pressure to activate the grip safety. Uh, the going frame by frame, it looks like the stock slid down off her shoulder, at which point the gun came up and went sideways, supported by his left hand under the magazine, pivoting to the left where the instructor was standing. Then the video is cut. I'm I'm not sure where the idea of that small pistol caliber sub guns are a good idea for kids to experience full auto shooting comes uh, if that's a good idea. People seem to think because the gun is small it's easier for them to shoot which is completely wrong. Small submachine guns like the Uzi are very difficult to control and require a lot more effort to control than a larger weapon or weapon chambered in 22 long rifle which would reduce the recoil impulses greatly. Uh, His view, tragic accident totally avoidable. I agree with that. Okay, so yeah, there's I, I, I mean, I agree with that. You start a kid off with a 22 and work up. All right, so I go back to what I said before I even knew that the instructor is in charge at that line, and Absolutely. things have to be done right. And, and apparently, supervised. he made it. He made a serious Thank mistake. Thank you, Stan. He made a serious mistake. Thank you, Stan. But again. Why does a nine-year-old girl have to be learning how to fire the Uzi? Huh? She doesn't have to be. She, she chose to, or her, her parents, parents suggested that she could. So uh, I, I, it is a fun activity, but proper supervision is required. One of our listeners, or Robert, says nobody needs an Uzi, and I don't know why they aren't illegal. That said, I have no problem with this. The instructor was a willing participant in this nonsense. The girl wasn't physically injured, and no innocent bystanders were hurt. If someone's going to be shot with a machine gun, it should have happen at a shooting range and not at an elementary school or at a shopping mall. Can't say I disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, except for the part that Uzi should be illegal. I well, yeah. With that. I, I don't know yeah, that cars they should, should be, be illegal, too, because they I, kill people. I don't know that they should be illegal, and I'm not saying that. I, I certainly have no problem with them, but I think they should be illegal for people under a certain age to use. Well, they're very, very heavily we, we, regulated. We put, a, we put a limit on how old you have to be to drive a car. A nine-year-old girl, if I took a nine-year-old girl out in the street and let her drive a car and she had an accident and killed someone. Can you imagine the outrage? I know. There's a hilarious commercial on TV where a man lets his child drive the car and the kid's stuck in traffic and he's like whacking his forehead <laughs> saying, oh, this is killing me. You're killing me. But anyway, it's funny. Well, anyway. I mean, you, you have to admit that is a fairly decent analogy. Uh, let's see. Uh, another listener sends a note, says, come on, letting a child shoot an assault weapon? Really? How r- irresponsible is that? 22, yes. Assault weapon? Really? Yeah. Now that's that's kind of my point. I mean, a nine-year-old w- doesn't have any more business firing a submachine gun than they do driving a car. Another They're individual, Than says, uh, tr- the trainer should have been behind the kid, hands on the gun, and only two or three rounds in the chamber, so that if it gets away, the results are less tragic. Says Than. Yeah, agreed. And uh, one other note uh, says, I'm sure that the NRA people are listening. Have them defend teaching a nine-year-old shooting. And Uzi. Well, I don't have any problem with nine-year-olds learning to shoot. Do you? I, I don't think there's anything in the world wrong with that. I, my problem is the choice of weapons. Right. And, well, I don't know. Supervision is part of that. Kevin, you have words? No. No, no. I, I just. And this is why in Pennsylvania they have a mentor license uh, for hunting. You can. There is no age limit on the mentor license. Anyone under 12 can go out. 
Now, the, the stipulation is that you have an adult, licensed adult with you, but there's only one gun between the two of you, so that there's an opportunity there to truly mentor and make sure everything's safe. Uh, so I, I don't know. That's why that's why the age thing doesn't make sense to me. I think you have to take it on a case by case basis per child. All right, Dave, Should we do that the- with driving too, Kevin? I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, there are <laughs> some 16 year olds that are not accept- that, that uh, aren't ready to drive. So and there's some 14 year olds right. that are. <laughs> yes. So all you right. think we should abandon all? And what about drinking? Would you carry that over as well? That, that is could be a, some, that, that's could be a, some nine-year-olds who are capable of drinking and some fourteen-year-olds who aren't. I, I'm not. I'm quite not. I'm not in favor of twenty-one-year-old drinking age. I mean, if it, you think it should be higher or lower? No, I, I don't think. Tw- I think twenty-one is a Too is high. an age that doesn't make any sense. Why twenty-one? What's the magic number at twenty-one? What makes you smarter at sixteen than fifteen? All right, well, Dave, you are true on, of guns. Dave, you're on the mark. <laughs> I agree there. What makes you smarter at eighteen or twenty-one than eighteen? I mean, at, at eighteen, you can go over and uh, run all kinds of munitions to defend your country, but you can't aren't allowed to have a bear. But anyhow, on this this deal with Lucy's, if they're fully automatic, they are illegal. They are to purchase. Even yes, a, you're e- not allowed to own a well to purchase firearm. to purchase. But what and about at shooting ranges? Are they are they legal there? The shooting range under supervised. She may have been you know that may have been all right. But as far as you know, you or, or Mark going down here to Geyser's Guns and buying a fully automatic firearm, unless you have a permit from the federal government out of Kenya, you're not going to buy a fully automatic firearm. Right, the kid can't own one, but she can shoot one recreationally at a at a, a recreational park, an amusement at a park. At license shooting range, shooting. yeah. Right, but, yeah. And but people can buy them. So I, I think you're saying that people can buy them with a the proper license, right? No, you can't buy a fully automatic unless you have all kinds of permits. You have to be registered out the behind by the ATF to get right. a fully automatic firearm. Right, that's what I'm saying. Okay, we're we're agreeing. You you in yeah. a specific way and me in a general way, but we're saying the same thing. Okay, so it can be purchased. Now, yeah, the there other, are thousands the of other dollars. Thing, well, the other thing of it is, it goes down. It goes all the way to the common sense and training of the instructors because there's a young lady. And I think she was in her mid or late twenties down in the Philadelphia, New Jersey area that was killed at a shooting range that she was using a pistol and she did back uh, it recoiled and she shot herself in the head. And what was so, she shooting? You know, just to say an age limit, that doesn't make up for common sense and proper instructing. All Can't right. disagree with you there. We got you, got you, Dave. Thank you. That's uh, a good point. You're listening to On the Mark. It is the WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show. We'll continue our oozy discussion coming up from the daycare. This is News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury. CBS News. I'm Dave Barrett. If I were a J.P. Morgan Chase customer, I'd be checking my accounts daily. Because of cyber attacks on that bank and four others in this country, attacks that may have originated in Russia, data on checking and savings accounts may have been compromised, but CBS business analyst Jill Schlesinger says consumers should not panic. I would be very careful before making any dramatic action. I think now the bank has disclosed the information to the FBI. We're looking for some clues as to what's going to be happening in the future. The bank will talk about it. J.P. Morgan Chase acknowledges the security breach. Bank officials, along with the FBI and Secret Service, are investigating. From April through June, the government says the economy grew at a fast than expected pace of 4.2 percent. Last week's first-time jobless claims down by a thousand, down to 298k. Another sign of an improving employment picture. But consumers are not that enthused about the track the U.S. economy is taking. New research on that. CBS's Heather Bosch has the story. Most Americans, 71 percent, think the recession will have a permanent drag on the economy. Less than half thought it would right after the recession ended. What happened? The recovery from the recession was very slow and uneven, and more important, people's paychecks didn't increase. Professor Carl Van Horn says his Rutgers survey asked personal questions about family finances, retirement, and college plans. That's why he says it's less optimistic than the broader consumer confidence report that came out last week. 
A second man from the Minneapolis area may have fought and died with ISIS in Syria, so say family members and friends. More from WCCO's Jamie Yukis. When you say that he's an Islamic extremist and he has been killed in Syria, I think the reaction is, oh no, not again, because we here in Minnesota, for whatever reason, have become kind of a hotbed for these recruiters to come in. More than 1,500 deaths reported from the Ebola outbreak in Africa. The World Health Organization says the number number of cases could eventually top 20,000. Correspondent Barry Bagnato says researchers in Maryland will be busy next week. Expediting efforts to develop safe and effective protection against the Ebola virus, the National Institutes of Health will begin human testing of a vaccine next week along with the drug maker GlaxoSmithKline. Dr. Anthony Fauci, head of NIH's Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, says it has already shown promise in tests in monkeys. The animals who got vaccinated were protected. The animals who did not got sick and died. This fall, trials to examine a vaccine candidate developed in Canada will get underway as well. Barry Bagnato, CBS News, Washington. You know them from the big screen. Brad Pitt. Angelina Jolie. Now their PR people say Angelina and Brad got hitched in France over the weekend, a small ceremony at a chapel in Chateau Miraval. Wall Street, S&P futures down six, Dow futures minus 46. This is CBS News. A touch of oil around the gasket, a little in the filter. The small details got you through the last hundred thousand miles, and they'll get you through the next hundred, too. Here's another detail you'll appreciate from Advance Auto Parts. Get five quarts of Valvoline Max Life High Mileage Motor Oil and a Purolator Classic Oil Filter for just $24.99. Plus, get a $7 Advance gift card by mail. Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Mail-in rebate? Void where prohibited. See store for details. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner of his ransacked apartment, wondering what kind of nitwit steals a futon. Luckily, the Geico Insurance Agency had helped him with renter's insurance, and he got full replacement. Unfortunately, Little Jack Horner had to have his stomach pumped when he ate a six-month-old Christmas pie. Visit Geico.com to see how affordable renter's insurance can be. With protests over the death of Michael Brown, what's that mean to Ferguson, Missouri and the surrounding area in the bigger picture? It's a big concern for economic developers, including Rebecca Zoll. Will the unrest and its publicity in Ferguson affect the image of Metro St. Louis? A region as far as national reputation has taken a step back, but it's not something that we cannot overcome. Zoe feels the metro area will ultimately be judged by the long-term response to the Ferguson situation. Jim Crisula, CBS News, Ferguson, Missouri. Diane Sawyer has had the job of anchoring the news evenings at ABC for the better part of five years. Now she's exiting. Look forward to being home early for some dinners again. And with gratitude for these years, I thank you. She's giving up the anchor chair to David Muir, but Diane Sawyer will continue to report and will still do interviews. I'm Dave Barrett, CBS News. There is something about the road that beckons, that invites us to pack up the family and leave the world behind. And there is something about an industry-leading unlimited mileage warranty on a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz that gives us the freedom to do exactly that. You take to the highway, Rack up the miles for up to three years and drive with the assurance that your Mercedes-Benz is covered. You have the security of being in a car that has been certified to Mercedes-Benz standards while you enjoy a carefree ownership experience for miles and miles. But while the mileage is unlimited, your time to take advantage of our certified pre-owned sales event is not. Now through September 2nd, you can also receive complimentary prepaid maintenance and a two-month payment credit on select models, plus three months of Sirius XM satellite radio. So hurry into your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer today and see why we say the odometer is there to record the memories. See your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for complete details and limitations on certified pre-owned warranties. News Radio 1070 WKOK presents On the Mark. It's a chance to voice your opinion on the events that affect life in the Susquehanna Valley. Call 1 800 795 9565 or email onthemark at wkok.com. Now, here are your hosts for On the Mark, 
Mark Lawrence, and Joe McGranahan. Greetings and welcome back to the WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show. Joe McGranahan across from me has uh, prompted and will help us continue a conversation about guns. An Uzi in the hand of a nine-year-old turned fatal for the instructor when the gun was set on full auto. Some folks say the instructor uh, shares the greatest uh, chunk of fault here. I happen to agree with that, but we still are invading, inviting your conversation on that. We have a couple other topics to talk about today as well. So Joe McGranahan is here. I am Mark Lawrence, host of the show, Kevin Hurry. He is the greatest engineer the planet of Earth has ever seen, and he may be as well uh, several galaxies wide the greatest engineer. There's just not enough telescopic data for us to confirm that, so we'll let you know as soon as we know. He's made the webcam perfect, and that is a camera that uh, focuses on uh, Joe and I while we are in Studio A. It's a little bit uh, kinder angle, and so we appreciate that. The audio is clear. You can watch the studio when we have guests. You can zoom in on them. You can use the archive audio or video to watch the show. If you miss the On the Mark discussion, just go to our YouTube channel and all the videos posted there. Lenape Solar email in basket is open. We don't have any emails uh, pending right at the moment, so we invite you to send in a note. We'd love to hear from you. 1-800-795-9565 is the toll-free line. And our main sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company. Kevin, and we're going to talk about your Honda Soul or your Kia Soul at some point. Tell us about that, please. Well, the Kia Red Red Zone Edition, uh, Kia Soul Red Zone Edition, is available from uh, Sunbury Motors. You'll find the, the Kia dealership on Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty for five years. You don't have to worry about anything. And gas mileage has been pretty good. We talked about it earlier. 27, uh, high, or 27 uh, around town and 36, 37 on highway, so you can save a lot of money on gas driving long ranges with that too. And the best part is, if you are going to take a trip, there's plenty of room in the back seat for everybody to pile in, so you're not sacrificing gas mileage to have some comfort with the Kia Soul. All right, fantastic. And if you put a roof rack on it, I can put something up on the roof rack without a step stool, like a kayak, <laughs> or your guns, <laughs> or a bicycle. No, the guns go on the inside. Guns go on the inside. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, they go right on the passenger side, with the muzzle toward the engine block and the. The uh, stock. Doesn't uh, your wife mind sitting on with the rifles pointed at her? Shotguns. Shotguns, okay. <laughs> she doesn't seem to mind. And the magazine's removed. <laughs> Or empty, depending on the situation. How are you going? Okay. Thank you very much for that. We are talking guns. We do have some news headlines to pass along, and we will do that very shortly. But we have some waiters. Uh, Jim is already on the line, ready to talk about this Uzi and a nine-year-old who uh, accidentally shot uh, the not the instructor at an automatic weapons range. You're on the mark, Jim. Hi, I'm Mark. Hi, uh, Kevin and uh, yeah, Joe. Joe and Mark and Kevin. You could prop. You three could probably buy a full automatic Uzi. They cost about five thousand dollars. They uh, make a mini Uzi, and they also make like a rifle type Uzi with a stock on it. It holds about thirty rounds in uh, three. You can get a ten round, a twenty, a thirty round clip, and uh, there's a mini Uzi and the rifle Uzi. And there is several uh, Class 3 dealers in this area. You can't buy it from Geysers, Long Shot, or wherever. And you do need a passport uh, photo. And you also have to go to your local police station to uh, have the chief of police sign the application. And then it's sent into the uh, uh, BATF. And then... Uh, it takes about a 90 to 120 days, uh, and you'll get a, like a yes or no answer if you can uh, buy the gun. Once you get the answer from the BATF, then you can buy the gun. Hmm. Well, that seems like there are a fair amount of precautions, but then what I do with it becomes an issue if I let a 9-year-old girl shoot it and she kills somebody. She couldn't handle it. No, because, no argument. <laughs> uh in uh, like a mini Uzi or even a, a rifle type Uzi, once they start rattling them off, it's climbing all over, and it does take a fairly strong person. And there is a machine gun range up in the Mainville area. Okay. 
All right, we got you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah, class three. We appreciate that. Automatic weapons. You go through a tremendous amount of scrutiny and and cost to be approved to buy automatic weapons. And I think about four thousand dollars is the cheapest I've ever seen an automatic weapon, and that's for an AR-15 that's fully auto. And well, as he mentioned, five thousand dollars is a common range, but they go a lot higher than that. We got into this discussion briefly before we went off, and then we wound up discussing it with Kevin in the middle of the uh, break. But do you think it's unreasonable to have an age limit for some of these weapons as far as letting people learn how to use them? No, not really, because if you, there's so many kids are so different. My daughter was so mature that, you know, I, she enjoyed shooting handguns and going hunting. I think seven or eight uh, she would go along now. She would not, didn't, the mentor program didn't exist, so I didn't have the same chance. But she, very, very, very responsible and very respectful and, uh, you know, fearful to the point of uh, complete respect at times, you know, when it came to larger guns that she wasn't interested in shooting. So there, that's age seven. Age eight, age nine, you know, when does a boy or a girl right. get old enough? It really depends on how the parents have raised them uh, up. What age would you have given your daughter an Uzi to shoot? Well, you know, if you were at a shooting range and you were certain that there was a proper supervision, uh, you know, I think that's a decision you would have to make, you know, when, when you see all the factors come you in. think the parents here were certain that there was proper supervision? Well, I, uh, they must have. Uh, they, right. they wouldn't, but there wasn't, they right? Would, well, there that's you, how it turned out. But, but you know, I think in, was, whether, was it proper supervision or was it a mistake? But look at the child. Why put a child in that position? That, that young lady is going to live with this all of, all of her life. All of her life. No, I think, uh, I have said this before, I think that the instructor is the man who is 100% in charge of that. The, the, the parents sign them over to them. Yes, the parents are ultimately responsible. But uh, at the moment, at that shooting line, the, the instructor is in charge. He has to stand at the proper place. He can't overload the gun with so many rounds that the kid can't fire fire it or can't control it uh, and the child has to be instructed you know was the child even instructed that now it, it's on single shot you know she starts out shooting just one shot at a time and then the, the instructor switches it to, to full auto was the child fully cognizant that this was the next event fully auto i don't know that well, and how it much could have been. how different is the recoil on one bullet as opposed to five coming out fairly quickly isn't it roughly oh, the same no 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 it's the difference exponentially between a, a five times greater right. it's a it's the difference between a tractor trailer and so by the time you get to 30 shots or something. By the time you get to 30 shots, you're almost having to force the gun down? You know, long before then. Long it, long after long. five shots, you are physically struggling. Uh, adult men physically struggle with the gun to keep it fully under control. Okay. Then you bring up my point right there. If that's the case, why let the kid have it at all? Well, I don't know. As I said, the But you said you don't, agree with an, you don't agree with an age limit. But if you're saying a full-grown man has trouble controlling it, why would you give it to a child? What's well, the size of the 9-year-old, Joe? Well, well, I don't think he was little, 350 pounds and no, eight, six little, feet tall. In the video, she's a little squirt. But, but so. that's my point. What's the size of the nine-year-old? What's the strength of the nine-year-old? What's the strength of the ten-year-old? But who's that's going to measure? Who's going to measure all these individualities, Kevin? It's I mean, called it, parenting, Joe. No, I, it's I don't called think it is. Parenting. Do you think these parents made a good decision? Well, you look at the outcome. Did they make a good it. decision? Yes well, or no? I don't know. I don't know the child, Joe. That's what. Yeah, I, that's my point. But you, you do know the outcome. The, you do know the outcome. Yeah, you we have know the to instructor make, made a mistake. You, you know have to make the decision based on the child, they not on they the. They trusted an instructor. You know, who you guys do it. know I support gun rights. I have no problem with people owning firearms. I believe children should be taught if they want to use them to use them responsibly. But I think, as with driving, as with drinking, there are age limits that make sense to apply. That's not taking away your rights. That's just saying we don't believe the average nine-year-old is capable of handling this kind of a weapon. So nine-year-olds can't shoot it. Yes, there may be individual nine-year-olds fully capable of handling that gun, but who's going to make the decision that this nine-year-old is an exemption from the rule? 1-800-795-9565. Joe's fired up on this. This uh, obviously has struck a nerve. So we'd love to hear your viewpoint on this. Somebody talk uh, Joe down. Uh, two emails on this topic. One says, uh, this is from the third smartest woman in the world, says plants are illegal in most of the country. For example, marijuana. Why shouldn't a machine gun be illegal? Well, it is illegal for most people, and it's a shame that that plant is illegal. And let's see, Tony sends us a note, says, Do you think this shooting accident could have been avoided if they would have been a good guy with a gun? Do you think, I'm sorry, do you think... I, I think I know I what he's trying to say. I have trying to point say. here. Yeah, what's, yeah, he what, saying? what's he saying? What, I, what he's trying to say is if it was somebody, if it's a good person with a gun that made a mistake 
does that change things? Well, no, I think I what think they were saying is saying. a bad. There are bad people with guns and good people with guns. Right. I think that's what I said. Right. But but does if a good person would have. I think he was being ironic. I think there was irony there. Maybe I'm wrong, but right. no, I, I see irony I, in it. I see it as Joe does, too. <laughs> I think because we talk about theater shootings and other places, if there had been a good guy with a gun there, things would have been different. Oh, so you looked at it from that end. I didn't see so, well, that's the only time I've heard the phrase good guy with a gun. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Kudos to Joe, says Carrie Walters. The good local pastor says, I'd like to applaud Joe for his concern for the child and the shooting incident. He's absolutely right. This little girl will live with this for the rest of her life, and I shudder to think how traumatized she must be, says Carrie Walters. And I, I can't think he's, he's right. I, that, that would be a horrible thing that I would never want to inflict on a child. Age, another listener, not signed, says age limits are arbitrary and unreasonable. It all depends on the individual's ability. And so we're now going to start with everything from drinking and driving and all the things with age limits on them, we're now going to say they're arbitrary, and we need to allow each individual person to be tested in some manner to determine whether or not they are the exception to the rule. <laughs> That's your suggestion, well, not what's, ours. Well, what's the other one? Let all of them do well, it, even if some aren't qualified? It was critically important that we come up with a test before people drive. You know, what, what we, well, sort we do of, have a we drive. Wait a minute, we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> well, no, no, no. We, we have a... We have a simple test for people to drive. Can you park and back up and obey signs and do a three-point turn and parallel park? That's not an ability test. An ability test would be comprehensive where you take a, a friend of mine is a trucker, and he took his son, taught him how to drive an 18-wheeler so he would see, I mean, showed him how, didn't put him behind the wheel, but showed him so he could see the res tremendous responsibility and the difficulty that truckers have and how hard it is to drive safely for millions of miles with a truck. Took him to the Pocono Experience so he could see what cars that are going too fast, how they drive, and so on. Of course, gave him driving lessons and, and examples and took him to places where you could spin and, you know, spin go too fast on a curve with gravel and not end up you know overturning the car or something but really really taught him how to drive before he could drive on his own so that's a real test all right what we do is we just send kids who are you hit the age and you get your permit even before then we p give you a simple test on a, a static driving course with a simple highway test that's easy to pass and then we give you your license people fail that test you know mark oh i understand many that. people fail it. <laughs> and that's making my point exactly why if, if it were a real test that truly ability uh, tested your ability to evade accidents and drive under extenuating circumstances and to recognize the uh, the keys of distractions, uh, many people would fail that test and wouldn't be given licenses until they were ready. And I'd venture a guess if it was an actual test, uh, it wouldn't. you would never pass. But Some people would basic, never pass There's that. a basic level of proficiency that has to be demonstrated. The society is determined, rightly or wrongly, that there is a basic level of proficiency you have to demonstrate before you are given a license to drive. That's not an unreasonable thing to do. There is an age requirement on that that says, in effect, we have found, and I assume that someone's done research on this, that generally speaking, people below the age of 16 are not capable of handling a motor vehicle and that they can't pass this simple proficiency test, as you put it, that we have. So what's wrong with that? I mean, that makes sense to me. Oh, We're I think it's okay. I'm, uh, that's fine. I'm not suggesting that we get rid of it. But I'm just saying that if we do, as Kevin has alluded to, the idea of coming up with it, if you want to actually test competence, there are ways to do it. Uh, there are ways to come up with And, you know, here's a good example. Have you ever been on a farm? What's the age of the, the age limit to drive a tractor? I don't think there is Zero. one. Zero. Yeah, there isn't one. Right. So you'll go in that farm, and a six-year-old will come up on a farm tractor and say, oh, are you here for your corn? And, you know, this big farm tractor because they're taught the responsibility, uh, e evasion of accidents and accidents avoidance and what to do if there's, uh, you know, certain circumstances pop up, how to drive it responsibly, how to steer clear of trouble. And and then they can operate a farm tractor at a But they're a, not on the road. Age. They're not on the road. Right, so they're not a and menace I mean, I, to anyone I, else. I let my five-year-old grandson drive my boat. But, you know, it's a big, wide river. There's no traffic out there. And you're right there. The and I'm time. standing right oh, behind him with my hand What makes him competent to be able to do that, Joe? <sighs> he isn't so you made a decision based on being a parent at he one point. He isn't competent. to. You didn't let me finish my point. While he may be able to go straight down the river at two miles an hour and steer the boat when there's nothing coming at him, he couldn't begin to dock it. All right, one eight hundred. Or back it out of the dock. One eight hundred. Up. Let's get Buzz, and then we'll take a quick break. Buzz, you're on the mark. Uh, down around Newport, I'm surprised I can still hear you. Um, 
we're missing the point here. She was nine years old. She was nine years old. I, I don't need to know the hardware details or, or ramifications of a newsie. She was nine years old. Right. If we're going to have competence tests, let's get it. Kevin suggests, why don't we have competence tests for parenting? Let's find out if people can be a parent I agree with that. before they're allowed to have children. Maybe a class in how to do it. You didn't hear what yeah. Buzz said. Buzz, repeat your last sentence. I don't think Kevin heard it. I, we need to have a competence test in parenting. You should. It should be determined beforehand whether you're, you should have children or not. If you're not going to be a good parent, then well, you shouldn't be allowed to have I'm, children. I'm not against that. Yeah, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel's going yeah. up for adoption, baby. Yeah. yeah. Well, right, maybe, actually, later. I shouldn't say that. Rebecca's Bye. a great parent. All right. Thank you very much, Buzz. Appreciate that. Let's take a break. Uh, we do have some quickie news headlines. We'll pass those along, and uh, we invite you to call in. We're talking about the nine-year-old who accidentally shot the instructor at an automatic weapons range out in the Midwest. 1-800-795-9565. Is it the parent's fault? 1-800-795-9565. Is it the instructor's fault? Uh, 1-800-795-9565. Is, is it, it Mark's the, fault? Is it my fault? I should have never advocated. <laughs> advocated for freedom in America because it just ain't working out. Lenape Solar email in basket populated by several notes already sent to on the market WKOK.com and our main sponsor is the provider of Kevin's Soul, the Sunbury Motor Company. You've patiently waited all summer to buy that new car or truck. Well, this is it. It's the giant Labor Day liquidation at Sunbury Motors. 2015s are arriving and SMC has to make room by blowing out 2014 models. The end of summer means the best savings of the year. Just listen. 2014 Ford Focuses start at $14,915. Save up to seven grand on 2014 Ford F-150s. And Sunbury Motors has over 75 to choose from. Four-wheel drive super cabs are as low as $30,924. Hyundai Sonatas are discounted $4,000. 2014 Hyundai Elantras start at $16,700. And every new Hyundai comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. End the summer with a new car or truck during the Labor Day liquidation. Going on now through Saturday at Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza Sunbury and at sunburymotors.com. SMC, a tradition of trust since 1950. This is Justin Charles from Lenape Solar. Did you know we use exclusive manufacturing partners? Our solar modules are made with American components in an American factory by an American company in Milwaukee. Our lighting fixtures are made less than three hours away in Philadelphia. Even our fluorescent lamps are made here in the U.S., as are our solar racking systems. We're dedicated not just to quality, but our local economy. Find out more by calling 286-1496, online at lenapesolar.com, or drop by our showroom at 140 South 2nd Street, Sunbury, and see these products in person. Susquehanna Valley Army. There's still plenty of summer left, plus fall to look forward to in making those important memories with family and friends in your Susquehanna Valley RV. We have a great selection of pre-enjoyed pop-ups, hybrids, Class A and C motorhomes, travel trailers, and fifth wheel models with and without slide-outs. As our family grows at Susquehanna Valley RV, there's no better time than now to get camping. Financing is available on all our pre-owned inventory. Make memories you'll cherish for years to come with late summer all camping. Susquehanna Valley RV on Route 11, Bloomsburg. We'll make it easy to find adventure. So get up, get up, and get away. There's an exciting new world waiting for you at Susquehanna Valley RV. A camper's best friend. Today is the day you switch to Rite Aid for one simple reason, Wellness Plus, the card that gives you credits you can use like cash, plus discounts that only members get, plus 20% off almost the entire store, plus that's for a whole year, plus rewards that start today and pile on every time you shop. So if you're tired of missing out on all the pluses only Rite Aid delivers, visit RiteAidWellness.com to sign up and learn more today about Wellness Plus. Rite Aid, with us, it's personal. Hi, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green, the iconic cleaning formula known around the globe. Since being introduced to households and businesses over 35 years ago, the family of Simple Green products has grown. But one thing all of them share is my full commitment to their excellence. Simple Green. Try a Simple Green product today, and if you're not 100% satisfied, 
I'll refund your money. Visit us at simplegreen.com. Simple Green. Simple Green. Welcome back to the <laughs> WK, Welcome back to the WKOK Live Telephone what ha- Talk What show. happened to our bumper music? He, he the world's us greatest producer. <laughs> All righty, we do have some news headlines. A heavy damage reported after a house fire last night in Kelly Township, Union County. Fire started around 8.30 at the Kenneth Herald home. Uh, one firefighter had a minor injury during that fire fight. A new poll shows Democrat Tom Wolf retains a wide lead over Pennsylvania incumbent Republican Governor Tom Corbin. A statewide telephone survey released Thursday by Franklin and Marshall College in Lancaster shows Wolf favored by 49% of registered voters. Corbin is backed by 24% and 25% are undecided. It's about the same as the finding in a poll in June. Latest poll shows majorities believe it will be important for the next governor to make major changes in the state pension and income tax systems. Pension reform is one of Governor Corbett's agenda items that is stalled in the legislature along with his Medicaid plan, both of which he says would help him in the polls if they could just get through. And he's got a Republican legislature. Right. Well, but that doesn't mean they uh, they all act in lockstep with each other. They're what's not lemmings. They're just Republicans. What's the other 1%? If you say 49% are in favor of Wolf, 24% are supporting Corbett, and 25% are undecided, what's the other 1%? They don't agree with the premise of the question, I guess. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, another note uh, from Philadelphia. An internal training guide used by the U.S. Department of Veteran Air, uh, Veterans Affairs compares uh, veterans who are unhappy with with Oscar the Grouch, meaning they have a irritating, irritated disposition always. The VA training slideshow on how to help veterans with their claims uh, shows VA employees uh, working with individuals who may be, quote, grumpy, unquote, and as a result, they use the Sesame Street character of the Grouch to depict those individuals. Uh, Many veterans say they're offended by the note, especially in light of the many mistakes noted by the VA. And cold cash just seems to be washing in from the ALS challenge. Uh, Since late July, the ice bucket challenge of donate or get doused with ice water has raised $9 million a week for those with a condition known as Lou Gehrig's disease. As of Wednesday, the total given to the ALS Association was approaching $100 million. An association spokeswoman says the trick is to figure out what to do with the money. 27% of the money does go to research. About half of the money goes to the foundation itself. The CEO earns over $300,000, and the foundation spends about $2 million annually on salaries. Probably get a bonus. Well, well yeah, is absolutely. The chal- is the chal- I thought the challenge was you either donate or you dump ice water in yourself. So right. how are they, so uh, the implication is that all the people I see on Facebook dumping water in themselves have not made a contribution. No, the implication is that people are choosing to do both. To do both. Okay, well, then right. it's not really a challenge. No. It's, right. it's donate money and dump water over your head. And what do you think of that? <laughs> I think I can donate to charity without dumping ice water over my head. Same. All right, one eight hundred seven. Oh, I'd pay to see both happen. All right. uh, one of our uh, our chief engineer from over in the next room, who uh, does speak some limited English, just says machine no worky. <laughs> Talking about the computer that didn't fire a moment ago. Oh, okay. But we'll, I'll make up for it in the next one. Oh, okay. And I'm going to do see. one, two of them. <laughs> right. Uh, he is going to get up to monosyllabic, uh, uh, polysyllabic words in the future. Uh, another note: Not sign says no license is needed to drive farm vehicles on the road between farmlands. Parts of Mexico have abolished driver's licensing altogether, and fatalities did not go up. I see. And let's see another answer. Uh, to answer Joe's question, the parents have the responsibility to determine the competence of their child, period, exclamation point, end of story. Well, yeah, what says the parents are responsible to make that decision? Right. Yeah, there are good parents, bad parents, right? There are parents who would take it very oh, is responsible. That, so if you make a mistake as in parenting, you become a bad parent, that's it. Well, no, but I'm, I'm <laughs> saying he's saying that the only person who should ever make that decision is the parents. They, they should decide when you're old enough to drive, when you're old enough to drink. You know, what if those parents are not capable of making a good decision? Well, you know, every question. we all have factors that enter into it. You may think there's nothing wrong with marijuana smoking, ah. and so therefore your five-year-old can have a toke. And Joe, you prove my point that I mentioned earlier. So if the parents don't have the capability to figure that out, why is there an age limit? Because the state, in its wisdom, has determined that there should be one. That there are trends that you can follow. Okay. That certain most twelve-year-olds are well, ready to. For example, go do you why can't a five-year-old drive a car, Kevin? Uh, 
part of it is physically. We have determined right. that physically he's not capable. I agree. But what if I decide as his parent that he is capable? And adapt the and car. And I put car. I put wooden blocks on the pedals for him. Okay. Do we need to now have a but law for you, parenting? Do you need a minimum age to be a parent now, Joe? Because now you're saying that if you're smart enough to be able to drive a car at 16, but okay, maybe the parent needs to make the decision. Then do you need to have do you need to have a legal age to be a parent? Good question. Uh, is just into yeah, the I believe l- there should be. <laughs> just into the Lenape Solar email in basket says, if a mentored hunter, someone under 12, has a shooting accident, the adult mentor has full responsibility. The instructor took responsibility when parents made the decision to let him instruct the girl regardless of age. Yeah, I agree with that. Thank you, Dan. Very well, they, done. There were, uh, the parents were required to sign a waiver. Uh, I was looking here to see what the details of the waiver were. Um, Oh, yeah, okay. The parents signed a waiver saying they understood the rules of the range and were standing nearby video recording their daughter when the accident happened. Okay. When is it right to use a fully automatic machine gun, says Joe? When is it right? I suppose if a horde of people were attacking you and you feared for your life, that might be one instance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you talking about the zombie apocalypse now? <laughs> well, that would be, probably be the only justification I would have for having one. I bet he means when is it a right to use a fully automatic. Well, for example, why can't you use a fully automatic, automatic Uzi to hunt? You can't. I don't think it would be very fair. <laughs> well, it's, it's fair now. The the deer don't shoot back at the at you. Do well, they? if it were true that just having a gun is all it takes to completely uneven the playing field, every hunter would get a deer. Now, there's a million hunters, but only about a third of them will shoot at a deer, and of that third, only about a third will get a deer. So and, you're saying, and only and and only a tenth will actually see a deer. <laughs> so you're saying the like. deer have good parenting skills. They've taught their young how to avoid you guys. Right. Right. When you see somebody yeah, sitting do. in the woods with something long in their hands, go the other way. All right. One of our listeners says, "In this country, must we pour ice water over? Why our must he- we pour? Why must we pour ice water over our heads to support research that should be done by big pharma?" Says uh, Than. Okay. Well, I would suggest Than pour some ice water over his head and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay to see that too. <laughs> Get his beard wet. All right, 1-800-795-9565. We're going to get out of the Uzi conversation and switch gears a little bit when we come back. Uh, We do have open phones, and so we will take a quick break. We'll talk about hamburgers when we come back. You are listening to News Radio 1070 WKOK. Sunbury Lenape Solar email in basket is open. Uh, Email on the market at WKOK.com. You can call us on the toll-free line, which is 1-800-795-9565. And our main sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company. You've patiently waited all summer to buy that new car or truck. Well, this is it. It's the giant Labor Day liquidation at Sunbury Motors. 2015s are arriving and SMC has to make room by blowing out 2014 models. The end of summer means the best savings of the year. Just listen. 2014 Ford Focuses start at $14,915. Save up to seven grand on 2014 Ford F-150s. And Sunbury Motors has over 75 to choose from. Four-wheel drive super cabs are as low as $30,924. Hyundai Sentas are discounted $4,000. 2014 Hyundai Elantras start at $16,700. And every new Hyundai comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. End the summer with a new car or truck during the Labor Day liquidation. Going on now through Saturday at Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza Sunbury and at sunburymotors.com. SMC, a tradition of trust since 1915. Are you concerned about funding your child's college education? Let Mifflinburg Bank and Trust take your worries away with a new home equity loan. Come and meet one of our loan officers to discuss available rates, terms, and financing options. Or apply online today at mbtc.com. Mifflinburg Bank and Trust, your community's trusted financial resource with convenient locations in Mifflinburg, Lewisburg, Milheim, New Berlin, and Schmokin Dam. Always online at mbtc.com. Member FDIC, Equal House. When your kids are young, it's easy to postpone saving for college. But the earlier you start, even with small amounts, the more you may benefit from tax savings or other financial advantages. So to start your plan now, contact me, Betsy Guffey, of Milestone Investment Services, located at Mifflinburg Bank and Trust. Advisory service and securities offered through Lincoln Investment Planning Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Lincoln Investment Planning is not affiliated with Milestone Investment Services or Mifflinburg Bank and Trust. Securities are not FDIC insured and involve risk, including possible loss of principal. 
This is John. And John from, from Biden's, Biden's Home Center. Center. So Biden's will be closed on Labor Day, but we're having a Labor Day sale? Yep, with 0% interest financing for one year. How will we be closed on Labor Day, but have a Labor Day sale? What difference does it make? It means customers get to shop and save now through 5 p.m. Sunday. Yes, but... Okay, fine, Mr. Technical. Folks, don't miss Biter's huge pre-Labor Day sale. Feel better? Only if we have great savings throughout the store. We certainly do, like a microwave card for $57. Or a famous Eden Pure infrared heater, only $147. And a Dyson bagless upright vacuum is clearance priced at just $227. But that's not all. We also have a queen set of gel-infused memory foam bedding, only $333. And a Frigidaire frost-free 13 13- 6 cubic foot upright freezer is now $397. So for these savings and more throughout the store, head to one of Biter's five convenient locations for our huge pre-Labor Day sale and 0% interest for one year now through 5 p.m. Sunday. This is John and John saying hurry to Biter's Home Center today. today. See store for complete financing details. This is your last chance to get the one deal on America's number one brand. It's the final days of your Quality Plus Ford Store's summer sell down. Your last chance to get a new Ford with 0% financing for 72 months or up to 4,000 cash back. That's right, 0% financing for 72 months or up to 4,000 cash back on select Ford vehicles in stock. Now you can drive an efficient new Focus, Fiesta, or Fusion and get huge savings. Summer sell down also includes exciting SUVs and crossovers like the Ford Edge, Escape, and Explore. Choose your vehicle, choose your deal. 0% financing for 72 months or up to 4000 cash back. But you must hurry. This special offer ends September 2nd. It's the final days of your Quality Plus Ford Store's summer sell-down. Your one last chance to get 0% financing for 72 months or up to 4000 cash back. For complete qualifications and details, call 1-800-NEXT-FOR. Get to your Quality Plus Ford Store today. Well, the Nittany Lions open the football season Saturday, so why not have the head football coach on the show? James Franklin, one-on-one with us today, 3 to 5, News Radio 1070, WKOK. Play Canada! Play Canada! They're not even a real country anyway. <laughs> All right. 1-800-795-9565 is what we call the toll-free line. We invite you to call us. The Lenape Solar email in basket is open. Simply email on the market uh, on WKOK.com or at WKOK.com. We'll read it on the radio. The webcam is up and running, so check it out at WKOK.com or check out our YouTube channel. You can watch the archive. The producer is Kevin Hur. The sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company and Lenape Solar. I am Mark Lawrence. Joe McGranahan, the greatest co-host the Tuesday and Thursday has ever known, and uh, the callers are always the star of the show. Kevin's the producer. We're going to switch gears a little bit to Burger King, which is going to be serving uh, Canadian burgers, or well, Canadian bacon burgers. And donuts. Apparently they're buying the Canadian donut chain Tim Hortons, and as part of it, they're planning to move their headquarters to Canada, thereby cutting their treasury bill by almost 50%. I don't, I, but I, don't see, I, don't, I just don't see why that's true, because you always hear that taxes are so high in Canada because of um, universal health care that they provide there. So apparently they're lower than ours. I don't know. <laughs> I would check that out. It just seems to me that, uh, especially, uh, of course, it'd be dreadfully complicated. But uh, the other thing about Burger King is the franchises are located here, and that's where you pay taxes. So you pay taxes where but the But your corporate taxes are paid wherever the corporation. For example, have you watched Have you watched the commercials? Governor Corbett's running a commercial saying that uh, Mr. Wolf moved his business to Delaware to avoid Pennsylvania taxes. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is not an unusual thing. A lot of companies are headquartered in Delaware because Delaware taxes are cheaper No, I can appreciate that. Right. So it's if Burger same King thing. moved if from New York to Delaware, that would make perfect sense. I just don't see how moving to... And I understand what you're saying, that some of their treasury bills might go down, uh, might be changed, but I... Uh, I don't know. Well, first of all, I think it's a big PR mess for them because of this conversation. Burger King's already ensconced in number two, and they'll never be number one with this uh, anchoring them down. But secondly, I just think because the franchises are here, so many of the taxes are paid here. Well, here we go. Uh, In the case of Burger King, the company will pay a 15% rate on its Canadian operations as opposed to the American rate of 35%. Right, so that's on its operations that are in Canada. But, but it's if their headquarters is in Canada, 
so their the headquarters HQ are, expenses right okay. will be reduced. If they were here in America, they would be approximately fifteen percent higher. Right. But you know that's uh, I guess it's a free market. We've determined that we want to charge more tax to business, and so business wants to leave the country. Is that right or wrong? Well, I think the other thing is that are they going to change the menu at all? You know, they tried healthy fries, that didn't work out. So, uh, you know, what are they going to do? Wendy would. Wendy's. You mean they're not like doing satisfaction? fries anymore? No. Oh, they're all gone? No. They, oh, they didn't satisfy anybody. They have chicken fries now. <laughs> oh, their latest they? ad. Yeah, I don't know what a chicken fry is. Well, it's probably a little sliver of chicken deep fried and ready to go. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I, I understand I understand wanting to cut your tax burden. But, you know, I, I think what's wrong with this country is that we provide tax incentives to people to leave. We make it costly for them to do business here. We don't have incentives. I think the only incentives the federal government ought to give are for creation of jobs. The more jobs you create, the lower your tax bill. Because if we don't get it from you, we'll get it from the workers. If we put people back to work in good-paying jobs. But the, we've got to do something to stop these companies from leaving America over taxes. I mean, whether it's cutting the taxes, whether it's making a law saying you can't leave. I mean, we have to have industry in this country. We have to have business in this country. And we can't just throw it all out the window and let it go somewhere because of the tax rate. All right, 1-800-795-9565. We're talking about Burger King selling the Canadian bacon burger soon because they will have a headquarters in Canada. Uh, Joe says it'll be a big tax break for them, say his reports, but uh, I'm, I, uh, I I don't doubt that that is 100% true. It just seems to me that uh, moving to Canada doesn't seem like a, uh, a logical step, especially if either from a PR move, plus taxes are higher and some tax rates are higher there. So well, look at manufacturing. For years, American manufacturers have moved their their jobs overseas or to Mexico. Right, or well, that's to, different than going to Canada. Well, but still, the reason is the same. It's cost cost effective to do so. So let's face it, if you're in business, you're going to find the most cost effective way to operate, especially if you're in an investor driven business and you have to provide some kind of return on the, the investment people have placed in your company. All right. Uh, we do have a caller on the line on this uh, topic. Good morning, Paul. What's the overriding question uh, behind this conversation? Well, Joe was saying about the the companies that are <coughs> excuse me are leaving the area and that we have to do something in order to keep them here well what did england try to do in order to keep the people from migrating to this country and the second thing is you talk about age and uh, being responsible but did you ever stop to think that when an animal gives birth Within two hours, that child can walk. And if you think that we are intelligent, then why is it that it takes our children two years before they can walk? <laughs> well, monkeys are the I, same I way. don't know what children you're referring to, but my grandchild was walking at one year. Yeah, one, well, one, even, one is the walking. a year is in comparison to two hours. Right. Well, I don't know. We're not gazelles. That's part of the problem. We can't jump 30 feet, and we're not deer, and we're, n we're not any of those. So, But well, uh, there are many species where walking is still a takes a long time for animals. But anyway, let's go back to your first question. What's the answer to the question, what incentives did England offer to keep, or what did Europe offer to keep uh, folks from emigrating yeah, to the U.S.? Because as far as I know, none. <laughs> that's exactly, and that's what we have today. Our, our outfit that uh, has that problem they're doing nothing either. Oh, so we should have incentives to keep folks in the U.S., and that's really what that's Kevin what I was is, saying. or what Joe's arguing. Well, even, even at that, when, when you think about history, about how far we came from where we were to where we are now, and now you look at the situation and you look back, you say, my God, the, 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 the uh, events and all the things that took place before are happening again today. I'm reading a book that you would be interested in. It's called The Coming Plague, and it's based on diseases that destroy mankind, even though they are considered extinct or non-existible. I wonder why you were such a happy guy, Paul. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it, what it's based on, and I was really surprised because I found out about Ebola. Ebola was a disease that started in Africa, and through the migration of the disease traveling to foreign countries, it was done so by cargo planes, transportation, and people to travel to foreign countries. And the same thing is happening today. And because of that, you're going to have the return of a lot of, of the diseases in which man fought to destroy or eliminate 
are going to come back because they become dormant for a certain period of time. But when man's population gets to the point where it has a means or access to transmit it, it will come to life again. Very interesting. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much, Paul. Much appreciated. one 800 795 the open phone. Uh, appreciate that. Some always, uh, you know, Paul's a deep thinker, so we appreciate that. On the topic of Burger King moving to Canada, uh, one of our listeners sends us a quote, says, If being based in Canada is more favorable from a tax perspective, one might expect Tim Hortons to have a lower effective tax rate than Burger King. But, in fact, the individual companies have similar effective tax rates, about 27%. That's according to New Yorker. Dot com. Yeah, uh, even though I'm not nearly as informed as whoever wrote that, I honestly think everybody who goes to Canada says the taxes are crazy up there. All right, Anne from Northumberland, thank you for checking in. Very much appreciated. You're on the mark. Hey, Mark. Uh, just, you know, one of the things I have a question about this, because, you know, I hear all this, you know, too, about, you know, I'm very much against companies leaving the United States, obviously, and I understand the tax problem, but what I don't quite understand, and this is where I get oftentimes confused, our CEOs of these big companies, as well as a lot of the one percenters, are, don't seem to be paying these huge amount of taxes. So is it the bottom line, really, that the companies are leaving because they have to take care of the shareholders of the company? That's the first question. And the second part of it is, okay, I mean, if there's that much disparity, you know, back in the 50s, if I'm not mistaken, if you had a, a CEO didn't make like 100 times more than the worker, or for, for all I know, to be a thousand times now more than the worker. There used to be some equity within companies, and it seems to me that, yes, they may have to pay more here in the United States, but the people that are making, you know, we're making the money for them by, you know, buying their products or whatever, the shareholders are doing quite well. And it just seems to me that, that you know, again, the trickle down and all these other theories, I'd like to believe that, but yet I don't see it happening. You know, so that's my kind of question. Okay, are they leaving because of that, or is it really the bottom line is, it's you know they're taking care of the uh, stockholders, and I understand that that's capitalism. I realize that, but maybe and again, I don't, I don't mean, I'm going to be called a pinko or something here, but maybe we have to rethink what capitalism was then, and what it is today, because back then people didn't move offshore and have their companies, you know, using uh, such cheap labor where nothing you know is is being. Uh, you know, checked, but, and, or is it again a way to break unions or whatever? Just I think, Anne, I think what you're missing is that at some point in time it was economically feasible for Americans, given the wages that were paid, for companies to operate profitably here. Now it's more profitable to go overseas. Now, American workers have a right to a decent wage. I'm not going to argue that. But, you know, you look at the consumers, too. They, they go to places that sell products for less because they don't want to pay those higher prices. Well, because a lot of them can't. And, I mean, you know, listen, I'll argue that, too. I mean, I grew up in an area where we didn't have credit cards. And to this day, if I can't pay my credit card off at the end of the month, I don't use a credit card. A lot of people, unfortunately, have been bought, you know, sold us. Uh, in their minds, it's a great equalizer. You can have it even if you really can't afford it. And we know that's a mess. And, I mean, my son's 26, and I'm still getting things at his at our house for him to get credit cards. You know, this is ridiculous. We're, we're, we're forcing debt on people, all right? And I, I just, you know, it, it just seems like people are talking, you know, the government as well are talking out both sides of their butts. And I mean both parties as far as I'm concerned. But, it, you know, I, I don't quite buy uh, that it's all, you know, that you know, we want to have a decent wage. But we want to have a decent wage, then why don't they increase the uh, minimum wage? I mean, for one thing. I, you know, I mean, it's again, there's so many questions, but I still think ultimately – our governments, I mean, our corporations, you know, they're not quote-unquote American corporations anymore. You know, they're world corporations. And for us to, uh, to think that they, they're going to be loyal to us, this is ridiculous. I mean, this is a brave new world, folks. It ain't science fi anymore. You it know? must be a brave new anyway, world if the government's speaking where you said they were. <laughs> Pardon me? If the government's speaking from where you said they were, it is a brave new world. Well, you know, like I said, I don't think that they're, they ultimately care about the consumers. I mean, I think ultimately they care about their stockholders, and that's all my point is. No. You know, that's why they're leaving. That's just my, my you know, my no. thought. Can't argue with you because they are thinking of their stockholders. If they don't think of their stockholders, they won't be in business. Nobody will buy their stock. Why would I buy their stock of a? Why would I buy the stock of a company that didn't care about my investment? I understand. 
hey, I understand what you're saying. But I also, you know, again, they come off like, oh, they're, they're so helped, they're going to help us and they're going to do all these things for us. But then they take our <laughs> they take our jobs to people that are still using child labor. I mean, you know, come yeah, on. Well, I can't you're argue real. with you there. That's, you know, I mean, there's, a, you know, there's so much lying anymore. You don't know, and, and all we hear about is fear, you know, scare this, scare everybody to death. Nobody wants to think independently. It's just my choices that, you know, I just feel as though a lot of this is just more corporate uh, you know, try to blame it on somebody else. Oh, it's because of this, it's because of that. Listen, these guys are making so damn much money, they don't know what to do with it all. All right, we got you. Thank you, and really appreciate the call. One eight hundred seven nine five nine five six five is our toll free line. We'll take another quick break, and uh, when we return on WKOK, we'd love to hear from you. We got a couple other quickie topics to scan through. One other note on the Burger King Canada discussion: uh, one of the smartest women in the world says uh, this should be obvious. I think we should just build a wall at our northern border to keep people from going to Canada. Maybe Canada will build the wall to keep us out. I would certainly <laughs> think that would be a wise choice. one 800 795 the toll-free line. Let it be sold or email in basket. Open it on the market, WKOK.com. And our main sponsor is the provider of Kevin's Soul, the Sunbury Motor Company. You've patiently waited all summer to buy that new car or truck. Well, this is it. It's the giant Labor Day liquidation at Sunbury Motors. 2015s are arriving and SMC has to make room by blowing out 2014 models. The end of summer means the best savings of the year. Just listen. 2014 Ford Focuses start at 14915 Save up to seven grand on 2014 Ford F-150s. And Sunbury Motors has over 75 to choose from. Four-wheel drive super cabs are as low as 30924 Hyundai Sonatas are discounted $4,000. 2014 Hyundai Elantras start at sixteen seven. And every new Hyundai comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. End the summer with a new car or truck during the Labor Day liquidation. Going on now through Saturday at Sunbury Motors in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza Sunbury and at sunburymotors.com. SMC, a tradition of trust since 1950. Now is the time to go to your Kubota dealer and get a brand new Kubota M-Series tractor during Kubota's Gear Up and Go sales event. If you're thinking about a rugged utility tractor and the year-round comfort of a grand X-Cab, then a new Kubota has your name on it. With a smooth-running diesel engine and IntelliShift transmission, your Kubota dealer is the place to start. Right now, get your own Kubota M-Series tractor for zero down and 0% financing for up to 60 months. So for a great deal, think orange at the Kubota Gear Up and Go sales event. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to Kubota.com. Zero down, 0% APR financing for terms up to 60 months on selected equipment now through September 30th, 2014. Not available for rental national accounts or government customers. 0% APR, low rate financing, not available with instant rebate offers. Financing available through Kubota Credit Corporation USA, subject to credit approval. Other exceptions may apply. For more information, call toll-free 1-888-465-8268. Come on home to convenience. Come on over with style. Come on home to Paint Central at your local Kohl's Hardware, where you'll find everything basic beginnings to the finishing touch in one convenient place. Save $7 per gallon on True Value Easy Care Ultra Premium and Weatherall Ultra Premium paints with coupon. Easy Care and Weatherall paint are available in over 1,100 new designer colors. It's stain resistant, has long lasting durability, and offers one coat coverage, saving you time, effort, and money. If you're ready to update your style and create the home of your dreams, make the process simple and visit the knowledgeable paint professionals at Kohl's Hardware for expert guidance and color selection. Watch for your $7 off per gallon coupon in our new circular at Kohl'sHardware.com and sign up for exclusive online offers year-round. We're right around the corner, right here in your hometown. Come on home to Kohl's for savings on all your painting needs. Come on home to Kohl's. Kohl's Hardware. Come on home to Kohl's. Labor Day is quickly approaching, but don't worry. Wise Markets has all of your holiday meal needs. Stop by Wise and pick up everything you'll need to cook for your friends and family. Our featured holiday items are fresh, locally grown, whole seedless watermelons, $3.99. Select Pepsi products, four for $10, must buy four. And selected Utz potato chips, buy one, get one free. Limits may apply. Stop by our grand opening at 719 Route 522 Sealands Grove for even more great savings. Shop Wise for incredible value, service, and quality. Take 
Head up to Canada while you can. Get while the getting's good before they put the wall up to keep us in. 1-800-795-9565 is the telephone number. Speedy dialers only, one of whom is Chris. Good morning, Chris. You're on the mark. Yeah, if, as Joe says, the corporation owes its, uh, owes its decision-making to the shareholders, why should the legal fiction of corporations either have the right to lobby our government or contribute to politicians and affect our politics or have religious rights? Well, you've lost me with that question. Well, it's so hard about it. Well, the fact that it doesn't make sense, forgive well, me, but other than plus, that. Plus being two paragraphs probably threw them off, too. Yeah. Uh, okay, well. Can uh, you do it shorter? It's simple. If, you, if, you, uh, if, you're, if the corporations only hold their responsibility to making money for their stockholders, why should they have the right to influence our politics? Why should they have religious rights? Because they'll make the t- decision eventually based on money. As you just said. So why should churches then be allowed to. to lobby? Why should churches be allowed to lobby? Why should unions be allowed to lobby? You know, it's a free country. You're allowed to espouse your views, it's, it's, and you're allowed to try to influence no, the government to do what you want them to do. doesn't mean that corporations automatically have the same right as individuals, does it? Well, what about churches and unions? Churches and unions aren't there for money only, are they? Well, I, what union are you talking about that isn't there for money only? They're there to get their employees the the best deal they they're can. For the, for the security of their workers. Right, and the company, and the, so what? The corporation is looking the for the security of the investors. Care about the security of their workers. Because How about the security of the invest? Money. How about the security of the investors? Why are they better than the, or better or worse than the workers? Why would uh, why would uh, not being able to give the politicians decrease the security of the? of the uh, financers in any meaningful way. Well, then you should ask the unions that, because they donate more money to, co- to okay, politicians than almost anybody. To, 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 well, then, so you think both of them should, then, not be able to do no, that? No, I think both of them should be able to do it. Why? I have no problem with it. Because it's the basic foundation of our government is that no, we're, we're allowed... No, let me answer your, let me answer your question. Let, let me answer your question, Chris. If the government... Um, what was his question? I forgot. Now, if if the government is trying to to be influenced, we have the right to do it. You have you the right. You have the right individually to do it. You have a freedom of speech as an individual. And so I have it corporately, and I have it in from a union, Why? and I have what it from are, a church. Where, the, where in the corporation law book does it say anything about that? Where in the union law books does it say anything about it? You're allowed it's, to. You are allowed to ask you your government to address. You're allowed to ask your government to address your grievances or your concerns. That's a foundation of our American republic. I'm allowed to talk to my government and influence it. Why should a money whose who's, uh, influence is mainly to the dollar be able to do that? Well, why shouldn't they? What what makes them inherently well, why, bad? Well, assuming uh, because it gives them undue influence over our politics. And and it doesn't. The unions and don't get undue influence thing, over our. The unions don't get undue influence over our politics? Uh, okay, get rid of the unions uh, as far as uh, contributing also, if you want. And churches and individuals. What well, about churches individuals? Churches are kind of different, aren't they? What about individuals? And no, no, that's the point. Have individuals do it instead. All right, we got a skadoodle. So Thank- what's the difference between individuals and groups of individuals? I don't understand. Thank you, Chris. Come and visit us again when Joe is here, and you guys can complete that conversation. <laughs> Very much appreciated. Thank you for coming in, sir. Yes, sir. See you Tuesday. Happy boatering as you go back out onto Lake Augusta. On the topic of uh, Burger King, smartest woman says American corporations, whether based on paper in the U.S. or Canada, the Bahamas use. Uh, well, we'll have to read that tomorrow. Yes. Too long. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, sorry, false alarm, folks. <laughs> Not a good letter to read at the end of the program. Well, too long. <laughs> Webcam up and running, sunburymotors.com, lenapisolar.com, the websites of our main sponsors. On the mark, returns tomorrow with an open day. This is WKOK Sunbury.